Hey everyone, this is MOSFET, your simple tech news update. Starting off this week and researchers in Switzerland have developed the NeuroRestore, which is a brain-spine interface. It can bypass damaged spinal cords, creating a digital bridge between brain implants and nerves in the back, allowing paralyzed people to stand and walk again. In their demonstration video, they showed Gert Jan independently walking after years of paralysis from an accident. The team claims that after only a few short training sessions, the system can decipher the signals between the brain and nerves restoring function. Amazing! In electronics, Beeper has teamed with Squero Fumi to create this Pi Zero powered handheld. It's designed to run Beeper's firmware which consolidates various chat protocols into a single app, though I bet it could be modded to run all sorts. I really like the high contrast sharp memory display used. It's available now for $79. Check the links for more info. In similar news, Luke at MNT Reform recently announced he's working on a new, thinner version of the Reform Open Hardware laptop, codenamed the Reform Next. Not much info is available yet other than the goal to make something in between the Reform and Pocket Reform. If MNT's past work is anything to go by, it'll be good. Meta have been working with BMW to explore how augmented reality could be used on car journeys. By combining sensor data from both the AR headsets and the cars themselves, they say they've overcome a big hurdle in tracking the inside and outside of moving cars, allowing for all sorts of different potential experiences for passengers. Speaking of tracking, version 2 of the Leap Motion controller was released this week, with improved resolution, wider field of view, smaller design and lower power consumption. It can be added to existing VR and AR platforms for high-quality hand tracking and is available for pre-order at $139. An interesting mixed reality headset to keep an eye on is the C-Real, which improves focusing and optics with the help of light fields. This allows users to naturally focus their eyes on objects close and far, removing eye strain and improving immersion. Moving on to flying machines and researchers at EPFL have been exploring ways to make modular cargo drones that can scale up and down depending on the size and weight of the shipment. The thinking is that this approach will save companies from requiring a large fleet of different drones for different situations. In other drone news, DBT Aero unveiled their unique-looking 3D-printed double boxtail aircraft last week, sharing news of their third successful subscale test. They claim this design offers greater stability and control, leading to a smoother ride for passengers, cargo, and more accurate data acquisition. A few interesting artificial intelligence model updates this week. NVIDIA unveiled Neuralangelo, a new AI model for 3D reconstruction using neural networks. It turns 2D videos into detailed 3D structures, quickly replicating buildings and objects. They claim it significantly surpasses previous attempts at achieving this. A similar research paper published last week by a team out of Berkeley can take videos of humans and automatically reconstruct them in three dimensions. It can handle one or multiple humans at a time and could potentially be an inexpensive way to track bodies and render poses quickly. And for those looking for a new hairstyle, they might want to check out Hairstyle AI. This AI model takes three or more photos of a person and can render up to 160 photorealistic hairstyle images with a potential for 80,000 plus combinations. Though it's not the most important tech ever, I can imagine this kind of thing being used in salons of the future. And ending this week with some 3D printing news, Prusa 3D uploaded a video showing how students at a Swiss university are using their printers for projects. Particularly interesting was how they've developed a way to print 90 degree overhangs without any support material needed. They did this by modifying the extruder and hot end, adding a rotational function to it. They also hinted that they are developing an even better way to achieve this without as much work needed too, so that's something we can look forward to in the future. Alright, that's all for this update, see ya.